All right, well, I'm one of the few people that went that wasn't kind of really well known. I'm Justice, if you see the picture. I wore this shirt because this is pretty much what I wore every day. Um, because I was just trying to not get sunburnt was my main goal. Um, I also wore it this morning because there's a lot of concrete stuck in my shirt because uh, I was one of the few people from our group who went to what they call foundation. Um, so they basically what we would do is you would show up and there would be two piles out front. There'd be a pile of giant rocks and then a pile of lime. And um, you'd put these two, they'd kind of just brace up like you're building a house, but it wasn't in the ground. We were building it just on top. Um, so you'd start and you'd put the frame around and everybody kind of helped, but they really didn't want a whole lot of our help for that part because they were trying to get it right and we were gonna make it wrong. <laughs> so <laughs> the second day I got to help because they had recognized me because I wore the same blue shirt. <laughs> so they knew that I had been there the first time, so they would let me help with that. Um, but you'd frame this up and then we spent the next hour putting rocks um, like car tire sized rocks into the, into the foundation. And I had learned from the first day that we were gonna put too many rocks in the foundation. Cause you would put the rocks in and then you would pour the concrete around it and that's what they used kind of to stabilize the foundation. They didn't use rebar or anything. But we were, the second day, we were halfway through putting the rocks in the thing and I was like, well, we have too many rocks. And um, I kept, I was like trying to tell our group, I was like, we, we don't need any more rocks, but we didn't have anything else to do besides put rocks in. So they just kept putting rocks in and I, I wasn't putting any rocks in. And they're like, why aren't you putting rocks? I was like, well, we're gonna have to take them back out. <laughs> so um, Jared was with me that day and he didn't know it either, but I kept, and, but Jared was the only person from our group that was there. So I kind of trusted Jared. I was like, Jared, stop putting rocks in. But if anybody knows Jared, Jared doesn't stop doing anything until the person in charge says stop. So I'm just standing there and Jared is like he manning the biggest boulders he can in here. Well, um, they had technical guys and they were talking about the nicknames and the two technical guys that were with our group was Herman. Herman maybe said two words the entire time I met him. He just pointed and used a stick and that's just, you figured out what he wanted. He was like playing charades. Um, but Herman, he would point at a corner and go like this and that meant you took the rocks out because they were too tall. Um, the other guy that was in charge, his name was uh, Blackmouth, and he was a uh, brother of the guy that I kind of got close to, and his name was Bloody, which I was kind of concerned with because I was sitting next to him on the bus going to the foundation, and I was like, good morning, my name's Justice, and I was like, what's your name? He goes, uh, Bloody, but it sounded like blurry, so I was like, blurry, and he's like, no, bloody, and I was like, blurry, no, bloody, like blood, and I was like, oh. <laughs> So I thought today was, that day was gonna be harder than it was. <laughs> but um, the, that whole first day, I, I felt kind of out of my comfort zone and I had talked to Jake because um, they had kind of talked, you know, sometimes you ask for things that you don't really ask for in a weird way. But uh, I had kind of said that I was kind of tired of being like, um, used for other people's kind of benefit or whatever you want to call it. And I had asked Jake, I was like, well, I want to do this. And Jake comes to me the next morning and goes, yeah, they don't have that today. Um, you are by yourself with the other group doing something we don't know um, what it's about. So that's, and then, yeah. So then I got on the bus and sat next to a Jamaican guy named Bloody. So we went and we did the foundation part. And they were, as everybody was, or, uh, Dylan was saying, you can't outwork them. I mean, it, it's just not possible. I tried, and you, you'll pass out before they do. They're, that's just what they're, they're used to. But when lunchtime came, and this is the thing that hit me, is for as hard as they work, when they are not working, they enjoy it more than anything else. I mean, when lunch showed up, like, we weren't building a foundation anymore. We were having lunch, and you could, they would just instantly went into a fellowship mode you know, about themselves, um, except for the technical guys. The technical guys hadn't been doing anything, so when we went to eat lunch, they were kind of fixing our mistakes. 
But Bloody was sitting by himself, and I kind of thought that was strange because everybody else was kind of sitting. Well, I didn't realize that the technical guys were his brothers, so he was eating lunch by himself because his brothers were working. Um, and I was eating lunch, I don't want to say by myself, but kind of like on the edge of the group because I didn't know him as well. Um, and Bloody waves me over, and I was like, so I went, I was like, all right. So I went and I sat with him, and he goes, is this your first time? And I was like, uh, building a house and he goes no your first time to Jamaica and I was like well yes to both and he goes um, he goes that lady who was hauling the water this morning is that we're building this house for her and I was like all right and he goes um, he goes it's very important for us to build these houses he goes the people who we're building these houses for he goes they don't have homes and I was like well do you have a home and he goes yeah and he goes, but this house is more important. And that was something that I think we take for granted is that, you know, just because we have a house, we shouldn't dwell on that, you know. And we're not building, like, what you would think of as a house. We're building what you would think of as a shed. Like, for real, that's what it was. It was 12, by, 12 foot by 10 foot and no rooms on the inside with two doors and two windows and a roof that you could kind of see through. Um, and when he said that, it just, and then we talked for another 20 minutes, but um, the whole rest of the time I was there, all I cared about was making sure that what I was putting into the house meant more to that person than what I was getting out of putting into the house. Because those people were right next to you. They didn't know anything about building a house like I did either. I mean, I don't know anything about building a house, but all they knew was that if they helped us and we helped them, they were gonna end up with a house and a home. And like uh, Brooklyn was saying, they don't ask for hardly anything. They ask for strength and for health. And so when somebody asked for a house, I was like, that's completely different. Like they're asking for a place to feel safe. You know, just feeling safe was something that was just completely something I'd always taken for granted, I guess. So that's what I got.